CQ, CQ, CQ. This is a W9 FMS production. Warning. This video is for learning purposes only and should be used with caution. Blackburn and Tech and W9 FMS Productions are not responsible for any actions taken. With that out of the way, let's get started. Hey, what's going on everybody? Brian here with Blackburn and Tech, otherwise known as W9 FMS. Yes, that is my real amateur radio call sign, just for those who've asked me previously. All right, so I was going to do a video previously on doing the the... Actually, it was a live stream. It's going to be setting up a Motorola XTS from the ground zero up. And so since I figured out my live stream setup wasn't working and until I get the other equipment set up, uh, live streaming is going to be probably postponed for a little bit. So I wanted to go ahead and do this because I feel that a lot of people want it. It's been probably my most viewed uh, content on my channel. So let's go ahead and jump in. And first, let's take a look at the physical characteristics, and then we'll go ahead and jump into the computer and actually start setting up the radio. Okay, so looking over here at the computer that I use to actually program the radios, right here at the bottom I have a serial port, uh, two, two port adapter that I use. Um, it's nothing fancy, but it uses, like I said, just serial port. It's like 20 bucks, so it's not terribly expensive. Plug it in, install the drivers kind of thing. And that goes over to this uh, adapter that I use to hook up to the radio. If you don't have a serial port, because if you're not familiar with it, this is what a serial port looks like. Um, if you don't have one of these, you can buy one of these adapters. That's what I also have. Uh, I, I typically keep one of these in my bag just in case. It's USB to serial. You'll need to figure out which uh, COM port that it's using when setting it up, making sure your uh, program can see it. But that's the physical setup. Alright, so let's go ahead and start this configuration. It kind of is more time consuming than anything. That's probably the hardest part of this thing. So, under radio configuration and radio wide, we want to disable that beaconing because we don't want it to talk to the, the towers. Um, as you can see, there's a ton of stuff here. Don't worry about it. POP25 is what we're looking for. We want to disable this checkbox and click close. Under displays, I'd recommend you to double check. Make sure it doesn't have anything that says channel on the right hand side here because you can have some instability with that. You can also change some other settings in here later on if you feel like it's something you want to do. It's for personal preferences at that point. Conventional, so this is like your your physical channels where if you think about like a repeater, a basic repeater, like a simplex repeater or or a simple non-trunking system, that's what these are. Um, I like to go ahead and build out 16 of everything because there's 16 channels on the on on the knob and it's easier for me to go ahead and build it out and then I can set it up later for what I want. So let's go ahead and do that on here. We'll go ahead and do click on this so we get 16. Should look like that. Fantastic. And then we'll go ahead and jump down to scan list. We'll get back to the trunking in here just in, in just a second. But we'll go ahead and do scan. We're going to create 16 scan lists as well. Okay. And here we're going to go ahead under our zone. We're going to create six to make sure that we have 16 actual RSS channels right here. We want to have 16 of these. So we'll go ahead and click on this. So we'll have 16 currently. All right, so that's the base configuration of doing this. Now let's go ahead and start setting up the actual trunking system. This is where most people struggle with because it's not something you typically do. Uh, doing that part, you could easily set up for if you're using it just to, for like a basic repeater. It would be simple for that. So let's go ahead and do the, the trunking part and go ahead and get this part set up. All right, so under trunking, we're going to first need to use our software system key. Uh, there's other videos that's out on how to do that. This video doesn't go into doing this. But first, you'll need to import it. File, import, software system key if you have one. And then you will go ahead and go wherever you have it. And then we need to set up the system first. We're going to use system one under trunking system, 
there's a system one. If you have multiple systems, you can monitor multiple, but it's expect delays and you'll probably have some complications. So by default, it goes to type two. We're gonna set this to Astro 25, because that's what we our system is. We're gonna go ahead and change this to our system ID. This is, can be found on a radio reference. Uh, this is typically at the top part of it. So we're gonna go ahead and do this. 262 is my system ID that I'm choosing to monitor. And my ID, I can put it as whatever I want. I'm gonna put 555, just for entertainment. All right, so one other area that I recommend you to check on here is under digital. Make sure that it says this. Uh, it'll you want to have as much clear audio as you can. So by having it this way, it'll do that. And we'll just go ahead and close this. And so under the personality, the trunking personalities, this is where you'll actually set up like your talk groups that you want to monitor. So if we look at this, it's saying type two, and there's an issue because we don't have any type two systems. We're going to go to them down here to Astro 25, and we have one of those. So I click on that. And there it goes away from being in red. Under talk groups, this is where you'll put in the talk group that you want to monitor. A uh, prime example would be, uh, say if you're wanting to monitor something, look it up on radio reference. You'll see where it has a decimal value and a hexadecimal value. For this value, this will need to be in a hexadecimal. If you put it in a decimal, it will not work. So I could probably do, I'm going to just do something simple. A Zero, 001, for example. And so this is the hexadecimal value of that talk group that I want to monitor. You'll put in what, however many you'd like to monitor, and you can go ahead and set this part up now. And you can always come back in and add it later. Just know you'll need to have your system key in order to add this later. So from here, let's go ahead and close out. Now here's now that we have all this set up we don't have anything actually mapping it together. So here's where we'll have to actually map our channels, our talk groups, and our scan list together. This is the probably the most of the part, the time consuming part of the programming this. So we'll come over to your zone. And let me go ahead and expand this out to make it a little bit easier for people to see. So we have our channels and Personally, I want on my radio, I want this one, this on channel one is what I want to be this, this scan channel. So I'm going to name it or where it says direct, that direct's fine with me for the naming, but you can name it whatever you would like. As long as you have a radio that has a display, it will let you change this. If not, it'll be grayed out. So what we're looking for is if you look over on the right here, where it's conventional, these are our conventional channels and what personality they're mapped to, the, to. So here's where you'd come in and actually go to channel two, channel three, for example. So that way, any settings you make on those channels, such as setting a scan list, it will be mapped to that, that physical channel. So I'm okay with this being set up like this because I'm not using these other channels as of now. Um, I personally put like empty or unassigned is what I, I personally do. But we need to go ahead and add the talk group in on this zone. So in order to do that, we'll go ahead and create another channel. And I'm going to name this, maybe this was for a police department that I'm trying to monitor. I'm going to come in and I can just name this PD or whatever I want. This is what will be displayed on the radio when they're transmitting. No, not when the radio is transmitting, but when you it's receiving it. So that's what you'll have there. You will want to click under conventional, talk group, and then it's under our the same personality. It's the one that I want it. It's fine. And then here's where you'll put in what talk group number it was. So where I only put in one on there, I personally recommend to keep a list. So like if you have a notepad, keep a list of which ones you have in what order. It makes it a little bit easier for troubleshooting if you run into issues, if you have multiple. So this is just the basic configuration on this part. So you'll have your conventional channels and you can go through and put one through 16. So it's all mapped to the correct knob position. And then you'll add the talk groups that you're wanting to monitor on this personality in right here. Okay, so we'll go ahead and close this. And now let's go over to the scan lists. So like I said, I want this on channel one. 
this this talk group. I want to monitor this channel on, or this uh, this talk group on my channel one. So we'll come over here and we'll switch this down to talk group. As you can see, we're on trunking system one, and we'll come under list. This is where you can add multiple talk groups to a single channel. Uh, so if you want to have Say you have two channels that don't really talk much, but you still kind of want to monitor it under there, you can. And here's what you'll do that. You'll come in and you'll go and tell it talk group one or zone one is where I have this at. Now, the reason why I do 16 channels, because I know anything after 16 is a talk group. So I know the 17 is this is this PD channel. So it will map back to the talk group, not to the conventional channel. So if I set this to channel one here, you would not hear anything. So you will want to map it back to the talk group, not the channel. So we'll go ahead and close this. I'm not setting up the other scan list, but if you chose to, this is where you would just repeat that same step for whatever else you're trying to monitor per channel. So if you wanted it, everything just on this one channel that you're monitoring, you could do that, or you can map it to individual channels. That's where it comes to really be time consuming. So from here, let's map this scan list back to that channel one on the physical knobs, knob so it knows this is what I'm monitoring. So from the, here, we'll go back up to conventional, conventional personalities and one. So this is channel one on that knob. Recommend to highly recommend to click on receive only. Receive it. You will want to make sure that you're under Astro. That will be the best to help you so you don't get that much interference with it. And here we're going to go under scan. And what are we scanning? Scan list one. There's no reason not to turn it on to automatically scan this channel because if not, you're not going to hear anything. And then it's just that simple. So what we've done so far, let me go to full screen for this. So what we've done so far on the configuration is we set up everything as far as our system, our talk groups, and then our zones. The zone is basically the glue that holds everything together. We have our conventional channels, and then right below it, we have our talk groups that we're monitoring. And then from there, we're saying from the, from the scan list, we're going to take this channels this one and set this one that for example here I did 17. So from here I want it to have that on my scan list and then I'm mapping that scan list back to the original channel one knob. Hopefully this makes sense. I know it can be a little uh, confusing at first. It was a little confusing for me when I was trying to figure it out. I think that just practicing with it, make sure you're, you definitely disable the, the transmit options. Because um, worst case scenario you set it up and it doesn't receive. Okay, cool. And you can troubleshoot that versus if you, you don't have that option, it will definitely be a little bit more troubleshooting. And uh, keeping good notes is definitely helpful. Like I said, I, I personally, whenever I'm configuring our radio, I keep notes on what I'm doing as so I know, okay, so talk group 17 is the one that I'm actually wanting. And so that way I have it just sitting over here. Normally I have it on two screens and I... I'll have like an Excel spreadsheet or I'll have a notepad or I'll have something to help me keep track. Hopefully this was helpful. Uh, if, if it was not as helpful, can you tell me where I can improve to make it a little bit easier for you? Uh, like I said, unfortunately, we're trying to do something this radio was not designed to do by default. That's the reason why it looks kind of hodgepodge on how it's set up. But unfortunately, it seems the way it, it is. All right, well, thank you. And uh, be sure to like and subscribe. It'll help the channel. I know everybody says it, but it's actually truly does help the channel and helps us uh, as far as content creators feel like we're doing something that's valuable to you. Thank you. You guys have a wonderful day.